But when Giannis is also sat out, the Bucks are also in the positive, meaning that they're winning when, when he's out more than they're losing. When LeBron, when LeBron James isn't in, last year we saw the Lakers sink after being the third seed in the West. And this year, we saw them lose time and time again the second LeBron sits down or he sits out. The MVP is someone, is a player you cannot live without. The Bucks can live without Giannis. Now, are they going to be the number one seed? Absolutely not. Are they going to be the best team in the West? Absolutely. Or in the East? Excuse me? Absolutely not. But they're also still probably going to make the playoffs with as deep of, of a roster as they have. You take LeBron James out of the equation of Los Angeles, the Lakers probably don't make the playoffs. And if so, they're an eighth seed. What LeBron has done for the Lakers, what he is doing for the Lakers, without a doubt, I've got to put LeBron James as my MVP. Giannis is probably going to win MVP strictly because of, uh, of the quick voters who don't actually take into the account of everything surrounding it, the circumstances of last year to this year. Uh, all we want to look at is numbers as in the offensive side of the ball, and that's why I really can't stand the, the, the voting that happens in this league. Uh, they always get it wrong, in my opinion. LeBron James should be an MVP three other times besides the four that he already is. Steph Curry should never have been the first unanimous MVP. We're constantly getting these things wrong, um, and that's the problem with having with having the voting the way it is. So LeBron's my MVP. Uh, defensive, uh, it's between basically it's between Rudy Gobert, Giannis, and AD. Giannis definitely. Definitely deserves to be in this conversation. Uh, Rudy Gobert does not deserve to be in this conversation. Rudy Gobert is one of the most inconsistent defensive players that I've ever seen play the game. Not only defensively, but offensively. I've I've seen him go for 22-12, and 12, and then he turns right back around and goes 6-6 six and six with one block. Like, Rudy Gobert is the most inconsistent big man in the league. But also, defensively, he's very inconsistent. He'll have nights where he's an unstoppable force, but I've seen him get scored on by anybody and everybody in the Western Conference this year without so much as a hesitation as to driving on him. To me, if you're a defensive player, players don't drive on you. Between AD and Giannis, honestly, AD has a little bit better numbers. He's a little bit better in the block category, a little bit better in defensive proficiency when he's on the floor. Uh, Giannis also is incredible. I honestly would choose AD as my defensive MVP this year. Uh, but I, I see no argument as to putting Giannis up there as well or to Giannis even winning the award. AD is my personal, just of what he's done. It, to me, it's where what you're doing on the team that you're doing it with. Uh, the Bucks are a very good defensive team. The Lakers are now one of the top defensive teams, um, if you take out the bubble account, are one of the top defensive teams in the entire league if you look at the numbers and look at the statistics. So even though statistically the Lakers are one of the best defensive teams and Anthony Davis is one of the biggest reasons as to why, I still think Giannis is probably going to run away with this award as well. Uh, it's just like I said, we're, we're so enthralled with more so the numbers or most more so the blocking numbers than we are the overall impact that the defense is having uh, I see no argument with the Giannis with Giannis AD I see a better argument for Giannis winning this award than I do the MVP T uh, to me the MVP should be more so a runaway for LeBron James that's never going to happen defensively I have AD as my personal defensive player uh, of the year but I see no reason why Giannis probably won't get this award or why he shouldn't win this award all right now let's go to rookie of the year Ja Morant, Zion Williamson, Kendrick Nunn out of Miami. Uh, this is a runaway. Ja Morant. Zion has only played in, what, like 12 games? And while Zion has been great and numbers have been great while he plays, you can't play 12 games. It's, it's my argument with why Kawhi Leonard, to me, is not a top two player in the league. He's a top 10. Because Kawhi Leonard plays great for three games, but then he sits out three. Zion Williamson can't be the rookie of the year and sit out with injury, then come back and then sit out because of time management and load management and then come out and win the award. John ja Moran has been special. He has led these Memphis Grizzlies to almost, you know, right now they're in the playoffs as the eighth seed. So he has led them in his first year strictly because of him being there, has led them to a first round, uh, I mean a first round exit in the playoffs. Don't get me wrong if they end up playing the Lakers. Um, but he has led them to the playoffs right now, sitting at the 8th seed. He has been dynamic. He has been exciting. 
Uh, he's Russell Westbrook with a little bit better shot, and he's only going to be a better shooter as the years go on. John Morant's my runaway rookie of the year. Now, on to one of the most fun uh, awards of the year. The, the commissioner has come out and said that they will award an MVP of the bubble. Uh, there's a bunch of players that honestly could get this award as well. It's it's super fun. It's exciting. Uh, I'm glad that there's a, at least a little bit motivation for these players that even if they're not going to make the playoffs, uh, you still have a chance to go out there and ball out because you're trying to win that award. Uh, first and foremost, you have TJ Warren for the Indiana Pacers. We have Devin Booker for the Phoenix Suns, undefeated Phoenix Suns, I might add. Uh, James Harden is up there, but also Giannis Antetokounmpo. He has been great. Uh, to me, I automatically eliminate Giannis just because he did sit out a game. Uh, I, now, that was not his fault, absolutely not. But in order to be in the MVP race, you got to at least play all eight games of these restart bubble games. Um, so to me, Giannis is out. Harden, uh, he, he could very well be up there. But without a doubt, I'm saying it, you're thinking it, Devin Booker is the MVP of the bubble. The Phoenix Suns are undefeated. Devin Booker is a monster. What Devin Booker has done over these last few bubble games, let's put it in, into uh, perspective. Uh, Devin Booker has hit a buzzer beater against the Clippers. He had a comeback win over the Thunder, averaging 31.5 points a game. Offensively out of his mind, defensively just as strong. The reason I don't put TJ Warren up here is he had a very poor performance last night against the Miami Heat. You can't have a 12.5 rebound game but then have a 39 and a 52 here. Uh, Devin Booker's been the most consistent. He's been the most explosive, the most exciting. He's been the giant slayer and slaying down Kawhi Leonard and Paul George at the exact same time. Devin Booker is my NBA bubble MVP. And if you enjoy listening about the NBA, if you're a big NBA person, make sure you tune into the NBA bubble edition, episode number three. This coming Saturday, we are going to address Damian Lillard's beef with Patrick Beverly and Paul George. We're going to discuss Ben Simmons being injured and the fall of the 76ers. Uh, All that and more is on Saturdays. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow so you can stay up to date on all things NBA. Before we bring on our very special guest and Mr. Young Mantis, I do want to give a quick rundown on the MLB and the NHL. First and foremost, the NHL uh, is moving along fairly quickly. A lot of these teams are underperforming. A lot of these uh, underdogs, I mean, the Nashville Predators went down. That was something that was unexpected in the first round. Uh, That's the problem going straight into a playoffs. The NHL got it wrong. This is something I'm going to talk about a lot next Tuesday. When you hockey is a game that you can't just go straight into playoffs and expect peak performances, and you, you're going to expect a lot of upsets. You're going to expect a lot of teams that shouldn't go home uh, that are going to go home. That being said, I think the play, when it comes to uh, j- just the overall play, it's not terrible. They're doing a pretty good job of keeping the coronavirus out of it. A lot of these players are very dedicated to keeping the season alive, which is more so than I can say about the MLB. Uh, but I'm sad for the Nashville Predators. NHL is already, uh, they're moving along very quickly. There's a lot of teams that are already done and moving on. Uh, we're going to dive more into the uh, NHL next Tuesday, uh, so make sure you tune in for that. Now, as towards the MLB, the bats are alive and well. Uh, we're trying to have the race to who can get the first uh, 10 home runs of the season. Right now, it looks like Aaron Judge is going to be on that uptrend. He's got eight right now, so that's exciting. But overall, my biggest beef is still the MLB does not have this COVID-19, the player relations, any of that under control. So what's happening is we're seeing game after game after game continually canceled because no one will take care of what needs to be taken care of. It's driving me up a wall. The players need to respect not only the fan that's trying to watch, but respect the game that they play. We, we've had so many strings of games. The, I'm a Cubs fan, and we had our whole string of games Versus the Cardinals canceled because of COVID. You know, the baseball keeps testing positive every single week. We're getting games that continually aren't happening. So what's the point of having a season when half these games can't even be played or they're postponed? And the problem is, is now we're going to get into a fight where they can't make up these games and the players are still going to want to get paid for those games. And the coaches and the, or not the coaches, but the owners aren't going to want to pay for those games because they're not being played. So are we going to be in an MLB lockout next year? We very well might. So MLB completely doing it wrong. I don't understand why they won't quarantine, why they won't take care of this from the beginning. 
It's been exciting. The few games that I've watched, the bats have been alive. The pitching has been pretty decent. But, I mean, overall, we don't know if the season's going to be fully completed. We don't know if the MLB is going to go on. Uh, I, I fully expect the MLB to have a lockout next season if they don't take care of this issue right now. Uh, and these players got to shape up and start quarantining and start taking care of their bodies and start taking care of everything that they need to. Otherwise, we're going to have a real mess on our hands come the end of the uh, MLB season. I know that this uh, it's a little bit shortened today, the, the bigger sports side of it. Uh, there will be a full episode fully packed this coming Tuesday. Uh, but right now, we need to stop what we're doing and usher in one of my very special guests, one of my very good friends, Young Mantis, a.k.a. Mr. Austin Taylor. We will switch over via phone. We've got a very fun surprise planned out for you all, so I hope you enjoy. All right. Well, as promised, the <sighs> adventures of Jay Money and Young Mantis are here. That is right. Those of you who don't know, I have nicknamed myself Jay Money. I had to do something cool to go along with Young Mantis because that's already way too cool for me. Uh, but uh, Austin, once again, thank you for joining me. I know you've got a lot going on. Barstool's only Young Mantis. What you got going on, bud? Oh, I got nothing going on. I'm just like, <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, really right now I've been speaking of, well, I we're going to talk about basketball later, but I have been starting to gamble, actually gamble, and it's been, it's been a very uh, um, time committing. Activity. Have you won anything? Yeah, I had a good winning, and then I decided to put all my winnings into one into the uh, Dallas Mavericks and Bucks game last Saturday, Saturday night. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed was the Bucks, so that sucks. <laughs> so, uh, are you betting through like with friends? Or are you betting through a website, or what are you doing? I'm just doing. I'm doing a website. I'm doing an app. Doing an app. I don't think I'm going to say it because I know I we got a. Uh, we got our barstool uh, sports book in the works. So I'm not going to say which one I use, but, you know. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I tried gambling one time, and then I lost everything. And uh, then I won everything that evening. And so I felt great about myself. And I did the exact same th- thing you did. I uh, put all my winnings on one thing, and then I lost it all. And then I was like, well, there went $500 down the drain. <laughs> after winning, after winning 400, I lose all the 500 the next, that's why I don't, I stay away from gambling. I'm not good at it. You gotta, now I know is like, if you win that much, you start like, if you want to cheat bet, you start to do like $10, $20. You can't, you can't give into that, all of that. And so you really feel confident. That's see, It was a good thing for me. I'm sure my wife loved it as an ego hit. Uh, yeah. Because I, I went in, you know, I'm, I'm the man. I dropped $500. I ain't gonna, and then I lose it all. And that was a very quiet car ride home. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I bet 500 on the um, uh, Super Bowl, the Chiefs and 49ers. Did but you win? The, but on the 49ers. <laughs> I'm like, never again. And now I'm back. So nothing else to do. Never put you here, – here's what I always tell people. Never put your faith in Jimmy Garoppolo. If you have someone on the other side that can, from his knees, throw 70 yards, I can't go against that guy. I mean <laughs> – An hour before. <laughs> well, um, I, I, know that, uh, I know that while you're away, you're hiatus from, uh, from Barcelona right now because of those of you who don't know, there's a world p- pandemic going around called, called COVID, um, that we've had a lot of fun conversations. Uh, and I know that uh, you're also a huge basketball fan. We talked about it last time we were on the show. Uh, have you had a chance to watch any of these bubble games? Uh, uh, who do you like so far? Who's your star player of the bubble? And uh, finally, are you still riding the Miami Heat wave of them winning the championship this year? It's yes, ironic. So I'm, I'm still like a, a Heat fan, but it's yes, ironic. I'm wearing a Bulls shirt right now. Uh oh. That's that's kind of my uh, my buddy. He's a court manager for the Bulls, and he sent me. He always sends me some gear before the season starts. So he sent me some like extra throwaways from last year. So I've been. It's one of these during like around the house. Yeah, you can't go wrong with a dry fit shirt. You can't go yeah, wrong. Yeah, th- that's exactly what I was about to say. And you, you never go wrong with free shirts in general. I mean, if someone's going to give me a free merchandise shirt from the Bulls, like I'm all in. Dude, I got, I got, I got my leg up here. I got the, uh, you know, oh, can you sit, oh, hang on, hang on. Me. <laughs> okay, there, okay. I got like six packs of these dry fit elite socks. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I just, a little, um, I just found this on the end. Oh, anyway. hey, look at that. You, you still got the, the tag on the one at the bottom of them. Yeah. But you know, I always socks, so I had long sleeve shirts, and my sleeveless hoodies. I'm, I'm decked out. 
But, That's um, what I'm saying. You, you might, I mean, like with all that gear, you should show up to the bull. I mean, you can be like, I've got the official bulls gear. There's no way that I'm not supposed to be in this facility right now, guys. I should. Remember, remember.